Hey, Alan here for Old English Outfitters. Muzzle loaders. What does that mean? A muzzle loader means it's just what it sounds. It loads from the muzzle. They're not a breech loader. They don't load in the back. Single shot weapons like this. Our ancestors used weapons like this. This is an old Thompson Center Hawken. It's a shame they don't make these anymore. Great rifles. Standard side, it's called a side hammer or side lock rifle. Usually, muzzle loaders fall into categories of flint locks, side locks, or inlines. Now, there's a lot of uh, people that are required by some states to use just flint locks. So, we don't have a flint lock to show here today. That's a little different subject. We do have a cap lock or a side hammer, this one. And uh, our ancestors used guns like this without scopes to harvest a game for many, many, many years. There was a long period of time when the flint lock was the state of the art in rifle ignition systems. It just was. Uh, longer, actually, than modern cartridge weapons have been. Uh, guns like this, very traditional, very nice. Uh, you know, you, you left your cabin, you went out in the woods, you, you shot your animal. If you needed to kittle a fire, you used flint steel to do it, and you got your fire going, and, you know, you stripped the meat, and you made jerky out of it, and all those kinds of things. Except it's not that time anymore, right? It's uh, 2022. Can you believe that? And the modern hunter who uses a muzzle loader uses it once a year when he goes deer hunting with it. If he's going to build a fire, he uses uh, not flint and steel. He goes into the kitchen and turns the stove on. Uh, he drives a car to get back and forth, and he probably has bad eyesight, so he has to put a scope on the darn gun. So here we have an inline muzzle loader. Now, this is a wolf. This is a CVA wolf. Pretty nice gun, actually. Very simple, very easy to use. The CVA wolf is a modern muzzle loader for the modern muzzle loading hunter. Has a scope. This particular one's a three to nine Bushnell. Stock is synthetic. It has a, a, a breech that pops open, like instead of, instead of having the, the mechanism all being on the side, the mechanism's in there. We still have a hammer, offset hammer spur like a lot of lever guns have, so you can cock it, right? A gun like this is very popular with modern deer hunters and very effective. Uh, it works really well. It has some modern uh, conveniences to it that the old style guns don't have. Uh, for one thing is the ability to take it apart and clean it, much easier than the old style guns. Uh, of course, the old style guns have iron sights. This has the modern scope. Now this is set up for iron sights. You could put iron sights on it if you wanted, if you're gonna, gonna use them. But if you need a scope, there it is. This particular gun, when you load it, you load it from the muzzle, just like you would this one. The powder goes in first, the bullet goes in after it, and the primer goes back here. Now, side locks like this, and there's still a lot of these around, they use a number 11 size percussion cap. In lines like this, there are some that use uh, rifle percussion caps, number 11s, in some cases maybe even what's called a musket cap. But a lot of the modern ones, most of the modern ones don't do that. They use a 209 shotgun primer. The same sort of primer that if you were reloading shotgun shells, you would reload a shotgun shell with. That primer doesn't go on a nipple, which is what that piece is called there. It doesn't go on a nipple on the outside of the gun. It goes inside the breech. And the way that works is you open it up, and there's a hole right there, and the primer goes in there. Now, modern projectiles have come a long way. Guns like this typically used round balls, a greased patch with a round ball. And uh, you put the powder charge in, you put the greased patch in, you put the round ball on it, you rammed it down. The ball was a little bit undersized. The patch would grab the rifling and stabilize it to spin uh, when it fired. These use something different. Here we have a what's called a sabot or sabo, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It's a plastic sleeve with a subcaliber bullet. Modern bullet, jacketed bullet, got a polymer tip. This thing will expand really well when it hits your deer. This bullet goes in the sleeve like that, and we have this little extension on there. What's that for? Well, that's for these. These are modern black powder, not real black powder. These are Pyrodex, replica black powder, but it's designed in a pellet form. It's got a hole in the middle of it. So you slide one on, and you slide the second one on, on that little, that little extension piece there on the Sabo, and you slide the third one on, like so. What we have here, each one of these pellets weighs or measures approximately 50 grains. So we have a 150 grain charge of powder. 
Now that's enough to propel this projectile out to a couple hundred yards, pretty flat trajectory and with plenty of killing power at that range. But it also gives you a nice, compact, convenient setup. Instead of measuring loose powder and dropping it in and then putting something else in behind it, you just put all this in and ram it home down to the breech, then put your, uh, your uh, 209 primer in there and away you go. So it makes it very efficient, very easy. You could put a couple of these together. Just make sure the powder stays somewhere where it's dry. Put a few of those together and uh, you're ready to go. Now, a mistake that a lot of people make with muzzleloaders, any muzzleloader, but okay, modern inline muzzleloader. Don't let the word modern confuse you. It's still a muzzleloader and we'll still, we're still using not smokeless powder. We're using powder that is a black type powder. This powder tends to be more corrosive when it's fired than regular smokeless powder. A lot of smokeless powder guns, you can shoot two, 300 rounds in them. You go home, you got something else to do, throw them in a safe, forget them. A few days later, come back, clean them up. Can't do that here. This powder, especially if it's such to sit there and just gets dry, will rust things inside your gun. So the thing to do when you get done, if you fired a round or two or three or whatever you fired, clean the thing, bring it home to clean it. Modern muzzle loaders like this one make it really easy to do. The breech plug on this rifle just unscrews. It has a reasonably fine thread, takes a second to get it out. But once we get it out like this, we can take this, put it in and clean it up really easily. And we now have, we can clean the barrel completely, end to end. Chamber, area, muzzle, all of the whole thing, end to end makes it real easy to do. Uh, there are some special black powder cleaners that work really well with these things. They'll work better than oil-based, petroleum-based cleaners. There's, there's cleaners out there that are, are water-based that will work really well. They'll clean these things up much better than a petroleum oil-based gun will, or based solvent or cleaner will. Then you can go back and lube it with natural-type lubricants that don't have petroleum in them. That will preserve the gun just fine and uh, keep everything running, especially if there's a little fouling in there that you missed for some reason. Muzzle loaders are a little different than some other guns. When you take the, first take these things out, you always want to, unless you're really sure this is clean, fire a cap through it just to make sure anything in there that's blocking the firing channel is blown out before you put a charge in the barrel. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and load up and you're all set, you're ready to go. To hunt with this gun, all you have to do once it's loaded is cock the hammer, pull the trigger. It's dirt simple. Uh, these things are very effective. They give you a single, well-aimed shot. Now, if you're well-practiced and you have your charges set up, you can reload pretty quick. But most of the time, as most hunters know, you get one really good shot. There are exceptions, but usually you get one really good one. And any other subsequent shot that deer gives you is probably not as good as the first one. And if the first one was looked bad, you probably shouldn't have taken it anyway, right? Okay, so anyway... Muzzleloading rifles. They are very popular. We carry inline muzzleloaders. Uh, we carry the Wolf. It's a good gun. It's not really expensive. So if you're, uh, if you're looking for something that you want to have for that distinct muzzleload season that's around, you know, this is a good way to go. It's a quality piece and it will get you through that muzzleload season and maybe harvest a deer if you didn't get one with your bow or during regular gun season. If you're old fashioned, kind of like I am, and you like this kind of stuff, works great. We got usually have the muzzle loading components to operate either one of these rifles. So, uh, muzzle loaders, they're very interesting. Flintlocks, I mentioned, that's a different subject. They're a little more, there's a couple little more nuances that are different with those than compared to these. I will say, if you buy a muzzle loader, doesn't matter what it is, inline muzzle loaders, especially because they're the ones most people look for these days, you get one of these things. Take it out, you hunt with it, you shoot with it. When you bring it home, clean it up. Clean it up. There's anti-seize grease that you put on this breech plug so it doesn't lock up in there when you're shooting a heavy load like that behind it. Make sure you use that anti-seize grease. And when you're done for the season, take the breech plug out, clean everything up really good. Wire the breech plug to the outside of the gun so it's not just in the barrel, right? That way you can lube everything in there put it away. It can sit there and nothing's going to rust on it. And when season comes next year, you can bring it out, wipe the grease off, clean it up, fire a cap or two, make sure everything's clear and you're ready to go again. And you're not going to have to go to the gunsmith and say, my gun is all rusted shut. Please help me. 
So think about those things if you're interested in this kind of thing. Well, uh, that's what we have for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Alan for Old English Outfitters.